John wants to learn this final concept in this lecture. The last concept that we are going to talk about is called correlation. So John is curious on how the price is affected by different factors, right? To put it simply, he wants to check how price of houses is affected by different attributes like living room, garage area. So there are different attributes of houses and well, our assumption says they should be related, right? So house of prices should be correlated with your sales price. So this is something that probably we want to measure that how strongly they are related. A good way to determine this correlation coefficient is using an already existing method called Pearson correlation coefficient. And this is by far one of the most, in case your values are basically continuous variables, right? You, you have continuous variables, you can directly use Pearson correlation coefficient. In case it's a categorical data, uh, well, you cannot use it directly as it is. Uh, so that's when you use something called Spearman's rank correlation. That's for some other day. Uh, let's consider a Pearson correlation coefficient, which you can use to measure correlation between variables, which are continuous data. So this is the most common method and calculating this, we get values in the range of minus one and one. So correlation values can be basically, it's a, it's a, it's basically whatever the method is, it gives you a correlation index and that index basically can be between minus one to plus one, right? So now, Let's understand this. So this is the equation for calculating correlation coefficient. So correlation coefficients is basically, I'll explain you the formula in a very simple way. It's nothing but X minus X bar into Y minus Y bar by Sigma X, Sigma Y. Now you know what is, this is Sigma X, right? So these, there are two variables X and Y, right? And then you calculate the xi minus x bar and you calculate yy minus y bar and then you calculate xi minus this thing let's call this let's call this a let's call this b then you take ab and then you sum ab right so then you sum the different ab values so a1 so there's a ab value that you would have here a1 b1 a2 b2 so on and so forth so summation of ab by summation of a square a square remember this your sigma x is nothing but sigma x is nothing but square root of summation of a square by n and this is summation of b square by n right and this is the whole formula that you have here summation of y b your square your sigma x is sigma y is nothing but summation of b squares by n right so you do that summation of AB by summation of, so that's that's intrinsically how you calculate it. Now obviously you can see that uh, if X is increasing while Y is also increasing, you would probably end up with a positive correlation, right? And uh, so that's something that let's understand that from the graph. So in case you have a positive correlation, that means there's a strong linear relationship between X and Y. Now that's something I wanted to kind of emphasize, which this lecture doesn't. Uh, that correlation basically measures that degree of linear relationship, right? So in this first example on the left, you have R equals to 0 0.04, which says that hmm, there's a very, there's a strong, there's not a very strong, but definitely some positive correlation. R equals to minus 0 0.04 says that there's a negative correlation, which means that so positive correlation means that if X increases, Y also increases. Negative means that if X increases, Y decreases, right? And there's a no correlation, which basically means that, hey, doesn't matter, X X moves ahead, X moves behind, Y is just gonna just fluctuate randomly. That's what you have for R equals to zero, right? But R equals to zero basically interprets that, uh, as I said, right, so X, a positive correlation basically implies that for every positive increase of one in one variable, there's a positive increase of one in the other variable. and and a linear increase right just keep that in mind that correlation of minus one means increase in x decrease in y zero means that for every increase there isn't any positive or negative increase these two are just not related right so just remember this r equals to zero can also be for a case where you have a non-linear relationship say for example you have data like this right in this case also you can basically see that r would be equal to zero that doesn't mean they are actually not correlated they are just not linearly correlated right just remember this the term is very important they are correlated they are actually related and there is just relationship between them it's just that for every increase in x and y there's really not 
anything that you see here right x in y increase in x you can see a y can go up and y can go down and all of that right so that's why linear if you calculate spear if you calculate yeah a pearson's rank correlation that would come out to be zero because there's not linear relationship between x and y so now what john wants to know what is the correlation between sales price and living area so that should be easy you use this particular function called np dot correlation coefficient and you pass the two sets of values x and y right because as we are saying so you're basically this is your y and this is your x so to calculate correlation you need one column of x values one column of y values right and we have talked about how you calculate x minus x bar y minus y bar and all of that so you don't need to manually calculate all of that the function kind of does that for you so you, and does that and finally does all the calculation of covariance and sigma x sigma y and finally gives you the correlation which seems high 0.7 right so maximum value possible is plus one my minimum value is minus one in this case we see a strong correlation in positive side which means that living room area and sales price are definitely correlated so if living probably if sales living room area kind of increases sales price increases hey that sounds rational obviously larger the living area better the price i want to pay for the house so that's the interpretation so more on correlation uh, the absolute value of correlation coefficient gives us a relationship strength right the larger the number the stronger the relationship for example minus of if it's a negative correlation minus 0.75 which basically has a stronger correlation than 0.65 right it just in if negative just says it's just a negative direction which is that if x increases y decreases but there's a string strong correlation right it just it's just in the opposite direction that's about it so also we can creatively plot heat maps in python to see or make our plot fancy and see the correlation between different variables and this is a very handy trick normally used by data scientists all over the world so let's do that so let's see what is the trick the trick is basically for all possible pairs of uh, you know variables lot area living area garage area and sales price we are trying to see the correlation so between all possible pairs of value and that's what we have here so lot area versus lot area is obviously one a variable with itself obviously one right uh, lot area with living area is 0 0.26316 same thing you see here living area and lot area is 0 0.26316 so basically this is this is basically a four by four matrix or each area is basically each call each cell is basically the correlation of this row and the column right so greater living area and garage area related at 0.46 so and you plot the same thing using graphs right so these graphs are basically just colors so white the more lighter color is a higher number the darker colors are lower numbers right so obviously we can see that white 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 here so which is basically lot area is highly correlated with lot area living area is highly correlated with living area but apart from that we also see that living area and sales price are highly correlated right so this is a lighter color out here so however this one 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 strong last word of caution correlation does not imply causation there may be for example an unknown factor that influences both variables similarly right causation implies that one event is a result of the occurrence of the other event that is there is a casual relationship between two events there is also referred to as cause and effects so understand this uh, let's first read this and we'll kind of go through this again together a statistically significant correlation has been reported for example between yellow cars and a lower incidence of accidents that does not in indicate that yellow cars are safer but just that fewer yellow cars are involved in accidents a third factor such as the personality type of the purchaser if yellow cars is more likely to be responsible than the color itself of the paint itself right so this is a very 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 important slide and i want you to kind of take time and understand this again i'm going to repeat this with you so correlation does not imply correlation. just two variables are strongly correlated does not mean that x causes y it just that means they are probably correlated with each other right probably there's a third variable which implies there's a casual relationship between both the variables now for example we have talked about yellow cars and accidents right so yellow cars and accidents are less the number of accidents on yellow car, if cars are yellow or not these two particular variables probably are highly correlated that just doesn't say that yellow cars are you know cause less accidents because there's clearly no reason why yellow cars should cause less accidents uh, well maybe there could be but 
probably there is not right so that's why you would not want to directly from correlation you cannot say that this two variable is caused by one variable for example same thing with say yeah, i cannot think of any other example but probably the understanding is very simple right x variable is related with y variable that doesn't imply that x variable causes y variable or y variable causes it's just that there's if there's an increase in x there's an increase in y if there's a decrease in x there's a decrease in y they could both be caused by some other factors right for ex that that the understanding so that's it that's the session recap time so we have talked about mean we have talked about median we have talked about spread mode variance and the concept of correlation versus causation so we have understood all of that that's the first part first lecture ever uh, together so descriptive statistics we end it here and we'll meet for inferential stats later log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates